What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Win Win Podcast, where we upload an episode every single Wednesday. And my name is Tommy Win, And I'm Sophie Win. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. It's so good to have you. We're a married couple who moved out here to Silicon Valley right after college. Prior to moving out here, we didn't have any family. We didn't know anyone. We didn't have a community. Fast forward to today, we have started our own business together, and we found a community that we just absolutely love. And that's why we started It's a Win-Win podcast, because we know what it feels like to not have community in a place where there's just lots of people all around, but you still feel alone. And so we created this podcast and this YouTube channel for you to just have a place where you can relax, you can chill, you can connect with us, learn more about us, laugh at us, and connect with us. Um, It's been awesome to see your guys' comments, your DMs, your in-person interactions with us, your text messages, that you guys are feeling connected. And so we are going to keep making and creating these podcasts and these videos for you because it's been really fun and shout out to all of you guys who've been watching the vlogs if you're watching us on youtube our vlog when we went to travel to texas um i hope you guys have been enjoying those as well yeah 24-hour road trip it was it was crazy but it was worth it so today as you've read on the title the one big game changer that's going to change your love life forever yeah, and I and it's not clickbait. I think it nope. actually is very true. Um, we are going to be taking the five love languages quiz on camera. If you're watching on YouTube and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, just kind of listening to us take this quiz and we kind of how we think through some stuff. And I have not heard about the five love languages until we were considering getting married. And our friends Daniel and Kayla took us through something called premarital counseling. And I thought it was amazing. And it's not to say that counseling is for people with problems or anything. I think counseling is amazing. Whether or not you have problems, I think it's a very healthy thing to do. And we did the premarital counseling and yeah, this is just kind of how we got introduced to Gary Chapman, who started or wrote this book, The Five Love Languages. It's not just for couples. It's also for children. There's a quiz for mm-hmm. children, so you can get to know your child better for singles. And um, I forgot that It can one. be for anybody. Anyone, yeah. you know, if you have a love life, right? People that you love in your life, whether that's your mother, that's your father, your brother, your sister. Friends. Your son, your daughter, your friends. This is a great tool to use to understand how people feel loved and how do they like to receive love so then you can show them you know the best way you can that you love them yeah i think it's really healthy to to talk about this stuff even if it's uncomfortable because i know like i i mean i'm not going to call people out on the podcast but i just know that there are some people who could be uncomfortable with this in my own life and i want to say it's not a bad thing if this is uncomfortable to kind of like talk about love languages and love and stuff like that. I think in Asian culture too, it's not like they come out and they're just like, I want to hug you all day. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh yeah. Um, and so, but then you never know that your their love language could be physical touch yep. and hugs are really important to them, but they don't say that because it's like the culture. Yeah. And so we hope that you guys don't have to put this all on blast like we are doing right now. And we just want to walk you guys through this because I do think it can change so much about people's relationships. Yeah. And you want to talk about the five love languages before we get into this? Yeah. So first one is physical. Well, not first, but it's physical touch, words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service and gift giving. So there's a five love languages and you will basically fall into probably one category and have like secondary and so on. So they'll give you like a percentage at the end, I believe. Yep. So let's take this quiz. We'll we'll read out the questions and the answers, and then we'll give you guys our answers, and then we'll share the results with you once we're done. Yeah. All right. Are we gonna give them the our answers? We are. Yes. Yep. Yep. So we're we're gonna tell you guys our answers as we go through each question or each. It's kind of like if this or no. It's more like this or that type of uh, yeah. quiz. It's not like a question where you have to answer. Like always, never, often, none yeah, of that. Yeah, it's, it's more like this or that. Pretty straightforward. All right, so the first question is, it's more meaningful to me when I receive a long note, text, email for no special reason from my loved one, or it's more meaningful to me when I when my partner and I hug. So I'm going to say the second one, when my partner yeah, and I Yeah, me too. I like the hugs. Click. Okay, you can read the second one. Oh, yeah. I can sp- so here's the next one. One, I can spend alone time with my partner, just the two of us. Or two, my partner does something practical to help me out. My partner does something practical to help me out. Hey, that's me too. All right. So the top of it, like the it's, the question says, it's more meaningful to me when dot, dot, dot. So that's yep. still the same. My partner gives me a little gift as a token of our love for each other. 
or I get to spend uninterrupted leisure time with my partner? For me, I would say leisure time. Um, I think I might say gift. Yeah, you do. You do you. <laughs> All right. Um, next one is number one. My partner unexpectedly does something for me like filling my car or doing the laundry. Or number two, my partner and I touch. <laughs> Mine's probably, I don't know. I, li- I think both are special, but. I know mine. Mine's when Sophie does laundry. Yeah, I already knew that. Actually, I'll say the first one, filling my car or whatever, because Tommy drives me around and gets gas and do all the things. Okay, for number one, my partner puts his or her arm around me when we're in public, or my partner surprises me with a gift. Um, I think I'm not really super big into gifts all the time, but I would say gifts because we don't really show public affection. <laughs> no. Was it, was it called PSA? What do they call P- it? PDA. Or PDA. Public dif- display of affection or something. Yeah, we don't do that. Sometimes when we're like in the elevator when no one's in there. <laughs> no. My partner surprises me with the gift. Yeah, that's me too. Okay. All right. Number one, I'm around my partner even when we're not really doing anything. Or number two, I hold hands with my partner. So which one's more meaningful? Um, I think when I'm around you if we're not really doing anything. It's the same. We're going to get the same love languages. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It's more meaningful to me when, one, my partner gives me a gift, or two, I hear I love you from my partner. Probably I love you. Same. We can't be saying the same ones. Okay. Well, maybe we have the same love language. It's more meaningful to me when, one, I sit close to my partner, or number two, I am complimented by my loved, by my loved one for no apparent reason. I sit close to my partner. I would say love by my loved one for no apparent reason. I get complimented. It's more meaningful to me when, one, I get the chance to just hang out with my partner, or two, I unexpectedly get small gifts from my partner. Well, I think we're in a unique time because all we do is see each other, so I'm going to put the small gifts. <laughs> for me, it's just to hang out. I like just to hang out. We are around each other all day, but Tommy True. likes it. All right. It's more meaningful to me when, number one, I hear my partner tell me, I'm proud of you. Or number two, my partner helps me with a task. Helps me with a task. That's me too. It's more meaningful to me when, one, I get to do things with my partner. Or two, I hear supportive words from my partner. I think supportive words, actually, Mm -hmm. um, because I have a lot of pressure that I put on myself. And I think Mm -hmm. I do just have a lot of pressure in my work and stuff. Um, And Tommy is not the one to just come out and be like, Wow, that was, you did such a great job. Like you do, but it, I I'm selective help. when I do it. Yeah, it doesn't come often. Because. Because he really means it if he says it. Exactly. Yeah, you don't get compliments easily from Tommy. For me, it's the first one. I get to do things with my partner, like going to get the mail together. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, was it my turn? I think so. Okay. It's more meaningful to me when my partner does things for me instead of just talking about doing nice things or I feel connected to my partner through a hug. I think I know yours. Yeah, it's a hug. Partner cares things for me, does things. <laughs> just doing things about doing nice things or just talking about doing nice things. Actually doing versus just saying you'll do. Yeah. All right. Um, it's more meaningful to me when, number one, I hear praise from my partner or number two, my partner gives me something that she... That shows he or she was really thinking about me. Um, I think when he gives me something that shows he was thinking about me. I think for me it's praise. Sounds like words of affirmation. It does. It's more meaningful to me when one, I'm able to just be around my partner or I get a back rub or massage from my partner. Massage, hands down. Massages are so nice. Yeah. But which one's more meaningful? Actually, I like the I like the massages. Yeah, because um, we're always on the computer, hands, arms, yeah. sh- shoulders, neck. Always so we right. just massage each other. Yeah. All right. So it's m- more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner reacts positively to something I've accomplished. Or number two, my partner does something for me that I know they don't particularly enjoy. Number two, 100%. Yeah, it's for me. That's it, me too. Like when I go surfing, you sit, you sit out and watch. <laughs> yeah. And then you get cold and you go back in the car. Yes. It's more meaningful to me when my partner and I kiss frequently or I sense my partner is showing interest in the things I care about. Showing interest in the things I care about. Are you sure? I think this kiss is for you. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to influence your answers, but... Well, I mean, I think, like like I said, when you 
like yesterday we went to Target and he just walked around the the clothes sesh, clothes section with mm-hmm. me and I was like he actually was saying I don't like those I like those. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean that's up to you. I'll but you do the, like your kisses. I'll say the first one. Okay, and for me it's the second one. Okay. All right. It's more meaningful to me when number one my partner works on special projects with me that I have to complete. Or number two, my partner gives me an exciting gift. 100% the first one. Same, first one. Because we work together. <laughs> it's more meaningful to me when one, I'm complimented by my partner on my appearance. Or two, my partner takes the time to listen to me and really understand my feelings. Number two for me. <laughs> I think... Um, Complimenting or takes time to listen and understand. I feel like I you're think a nightmare. number one, <laughs> like when she tells me I have a fresh haircut, that feels good. Yeah. Also, we're 60% of the way there. Yay. Thanks for watching and sticking around this far. Yep. Make sure to subscribe, (laughs) like the video if you've enjoyed it so far, and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date to all of our videos. I think it's your turn. Oh. It's more meaningful to me, number one, my partner and I share non-sexual touch in public. Or number two, my partner offers to run errands for me. Number two. I don't know what non-sexual touch like this. Yeah, like holding hands in public or whatever. Number two. It's more meaningful to me when my partner does a bit more than his or her normal share of responsibilities we sh- of the responsibilities we share, except like working around the house, work related, etc. Or I get a gift that I know my partner put thought into choosing. First one. Really? Shared responsibilities. Yeah. Like you really don't like laundry, but if you do do it like yesterday, I was shocked. Mm. He did laundry, you guys. That's why the second time since we've lived here. <laughs> That's a lie. No, but I could just tell. I did it at least like five times. I could just tell by the way he's like pouring the detergent or like where to put it on the little thing. I was like, like for me, it's just so quick. Like I don't even got to think. Oh, yeah, it's like second nature. I had to like figure it out. You had to figure out. it out. Yeah. So I'd say the well, first Well, I want to make sure I put the detergent in the right spot, like not in the bleach or some yeah, fabric exactly. softener. But you could just yeah. tell it's not in his normal rhythm. I think, I mean, yeah, I think the same for me. Like when she does dishes, I'm like, hmm, that's nice. I do dishes all the time. (laughs) It's more meaningful. Oh, wait. I think it's your turn to read. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, It's more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner doesn't check his or her phone while we're talking. Number two, my partner goes out of their way to do something that relieves pressure on me. (laughs) Not number one minus the second one. Mine is definitely number one. Yeah. So, for example, like when we go out to like dinner dates... I I don't I don't want to take my phone out because I just want her undivided attention. But then I look over and and she'll be like, "Oh, look at this thing on Instagram! Like it's so funny." <laughs> I'm like, "We're on a date. Like let's let's date." I'm not surprised by this at all. Yeah, yeah I'm working on it, guys. Quality time is just not. Sometimes things take time. Yeah, Tommy likes quality time more than I do. I'm not gonna lie. It's more meaningful to me when I can look forward to a holiday because of a gift I anticipate receiving or I hear the words, I appreciate you for my partner. Um, I appreciate you. <laughs> hmm. I think number one. Wow. Yeah. Shocked. Wait, I don't know. I don't really look forward to it because I don't really care too much about gifts. But it's stronger than the I appreciate you. But maybe stronger than the I appreciate you. Your turn. Oh, did I click on this? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner brings me a little gift after he or she has been traveling without me. Or number two, my partner takes care of something I'm responsible to do, but I feel too stressed to do it at the time. Number two for me. Hmm. I mean, we travel together all the time, but let's say you had another job or something. I would say one, because okay. if you're traveling and you got a gift from me, I'd be like, oh, he thought about me. With my job before, I traveled a lot. Yeah. Or I traveled more often. I don't think you ever brought me gifts, though. <laughs> I didn't, because, I don't know, it was just like... There's no time to. It's, I mean, not, it's yeah. not like you're going to Mexico, like Cancun or something without me. You're going yeah. to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's like work trips. Okay. Oh, it's your turn. Okay. It's more meaningful to me when my partner doesn't interrupt me while I'm talking or gift giving is an important part of our relationship. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, too. Tommy interrupted me yesterday and I was like, can I finish my sentence? <laughs> and I was like, Zip. I got so irritated. I'm like, let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah. Sometimes like I'll get a thought in my head and like she'll say something and then like it just comes up and then it just comes out of my mouth. 
and I don't think about it. So active listening is effort, takes effort. It's not easy to be an active listener. Yeah. I think it's my turn, right? Mm-hmm. It's more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner helps me out when he or she knows I'm already tired. Or number two, I get to go somewhere while spending time with my partner. First one. Number two for me, like going to Yosemite, like that's cool. When I'm exhausted and I wake up and the kitchen's clean because he knows that's like the number one thing that I need is like a clean house when I wake up. I'm like, thank you. It's more meaningful to me when my partner and I are physically intimate or my partner gives me a little gift that he or she picked up on the course of their normal day. Well, yeah, first. I mean, unless you want to come home with Boba, that'd be a great thing. Ooh, see? But you wouldn't do that. You'd probably like that more. I would. Mm Mm-hmm. But I click the other one, so whatever. <laughs> you can go back. There's a back button. It's okay. All right. So it's more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner says something encouraging to me. Or number two, I get to spend time in a shared activity or hobby with my partner. All right. Hobbies and activities are the complete opposite. But if Tommy watches, like, Legally Blonde with me, I'd say that's more meaningful than him saying, like, something encouraging. Yeah, I've seen Legally Blonde like, probably a hundred times mm-hmm. and Mean Girls. Yeah. I know almost all the words. Yeah. Which one are you going to choose? I would say number two as well. Like when you go, surfing. I guess when you go watch me surf. Yeah. I'm trying to get her to go surfing, guys, but I'm not close yet. It's taking some time. It's more meaningful to me when my partner surprises me with a small token of their appreciation or my partner and I touch a lot during the normal course of the day. Probably a second one because, yeah. I'll say number one for me. Yeah. Small token. Your turn. It's more meaningful to me when, number one, my partner helps me out, especially if I know they're already busy. Or number two, I hear my partner specifically tell me I appreciate you. Probably number one. Helping me. Because I'm a helper by nature. I don't really ask anyone for help. I mean, I do. Because I know how to ask for help now. Yeah. But I'm such a, I can do it all on my own person. Number one for me as well. It's more meaningful to me when my partner and I embrace after we've been apart for a while or I hear my partner say how much I mean to him or her. Um, Probably the first one. Yeah, I feel like we have very similar answers. We're at 97%, so we're almost done. Oh, okay. Pick it. Number one for me. Okay. All right, so here are the results. Wow. And you can, I'll let you go first and share your results. Hey. Okay, so I already knew what mine was. So we've actually taken this test before. Long time so it's going to be interesting to see how things have changed or remained the same. So if you want to share your results first. I'm surprised. So my primary love language is acts of service. What was your percentage? Oh, there's, so there's percentages. 33%. Okay, so acts of services. Mine was acts of services as well. Acts of service. Oh, acts of service. <laughs> Okay, so we both got 33%, which yeah. is crazy. I mean, we basically answered all the things the same. Not all of it. I mean, a couple of, a couple of different answers here and there. Yeah. Okay. And well, then what was your number two? My so that was 33% for our top, which is for both of us. It was exactly the same. My second one is physical touch, 27%. Pretty close. Wow. Which is pretty accurate. Yeah. My, my second one, which was 30%, was quality time. So when we took the test before, I think this was years ago, maybe a couple of years ago. Yeah. Would you say yours were pretty much the same or do you think something was a little bit different? Mm, different. It's changed. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What was it before? What was your number one? Physical touch, acts of service, quality time, words of affirmation, gifts. Oh, okay. So one and two flipped. Yeah. Okay. So A for lot of them flipped, actually. Gotcha. I think for me, flipped a little bit, too. Mine, you, mine was, number one was quality time. It's and then now it's close. active save service. You're only 3% away. Yeah, so 33% and 30%. So it's basically, that's my top two. And I agree very much with it. Yeah, acts of service, physical touch for me. The next one was receiving gifts. For number three? Yeah. My number three, actually I was tied for number three, um, words of affirmation and physical touch. And then receiving gifts was at the bottom, which was the same result as last time as well. 10%. And then mine was quality time. And the last one was... Words of affirmation. All right. So there it is. Those are our results. I would say they're pretty similar to our previous test that we took. Yeah. I'm um, surprised access service is my first one, though. With some variation. Maybe because, I don't know. 
Actually, there's a description here if you want to read that. It's, and her descriptions are exactly the same. You, you want, want to read, read that? it? Yeah. Okay. Your primary love language is acts of service. Can vacuuming the floors really be an expression of love? Absolutely. Anything you do to ease the burden of responsibilities weighing on an acts of service person will speak volumes. The words he or she most want to hear. Let me do that for you. Laziness, broken commitments, and making more work for them tell speakers of this love language their feelings don't matter. Finding ways to serve speaks volumes to the recipient of these acts. I agree. Definitely. <laughs> and I think for me too, what I've noticed, because acts of service or quality time is my love language, it's, it's the way I show love as well. And I think when you learn other people's love languages, you become more intentional about how you show them love mm -hmm. um, and the different ways they would like to receive it if someone likes physical touch. So I actually keep this in mind now when I talk with people and I find out what their love language is. I mean, this the times right now is kind of different, right? Um, like physical touch, for example. Um, I know someone whose love language is that, so every time I see them, I give them a hug. Yeah. Or I somehow like touch them when I when we greet or like when we see each other. I know who you're talking. Instead about. of just saying hi, yeah. So I'm like I'm, I'm more intentional about it because I know how this person likes to receive love. And me too. And I love hugs. And for well, for the most part, I do. <laughs> kind of depends but who with, it is. With the times right now, it is a little weird and awkward. But it depends but yeah. who it is. Like I don't just hug random people. Like I'm not about that. But yeah, um, people like our friends and stuff. And if your love language is gifts, and I know it's gifts, next time I see you, you might receive a little gift. Yeah. I think, too, it goes the other way around. Like, when you guys take this quiz, let us know what your love language is because yeah. we want to know so we can love you guys the way you feel the most loved. And if your spouse, you take this quiz and gift giving is 2% of their love language, but you keep giving them expensive gifts or, like, a bunch of gifts. It's they wasting might, your money. They, in the, I mean, not really. but Well, in the book, they basically said that your spouse will not feel loved. Yeah. Um, so you're just showing love the wrong way. It's like speaking or a the way language. Where, yeah, where they don't feel as loved. It's like me speaking Lao and Tommy speaking Spanish. And I'm like showing him so much love in Lao, but he doesn't understand because he speaks Spanish or something. Yeah. That's kind of how the book said it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was fun. It's been a while yeah. since we've taken this. And we really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and this podcast. Please let us know what your love language is. And if you take the quiz again... Um, tell us if it's changed. Yeah, and we'll drop the link in the description in the podcast and on the YouTube channel, uh, YouTube video as well. So you guys can take it and then, like Sophie said, comment down below if you're watching on YouTube what yours is. Yeah. Awesome, you guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of It's a Win-Win. And don't forget, we upload a new podcast every single Wednesday. And we have vlogs coming soon, more vlogs. And so make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on anything. Yes. So my name is Tommy Wynn. And I'm Sophie Wynn. And it's a win-win podcast where we upload every Wednesday. See you guys next Wednesday. Peace. Bye.